Good. Hello, and welcome to Anxiety Hacks, the podcast that explores the ways in which anxiety affects our daily lives and the strategies we can use to manage it. So I'm your host, Kate Hudson-Horn. Before we begin, my book, Anxiety Hacks, has just launched as an audio book. So check it out. It's on all the major platforms. Now, in today's episode, we'll be discussing anxiety behaviors, behaviors with our special guest, Dr. Lulu Shemek. So Dr. Lulu is a naturopathic physician and expert in women's health, biohacking and genetics. She has a unique approach to addressing anxiety, which involves a comprehensive evaluation of hormones, gut health and epigenetics factors. Dr. Lulu's treatment plans include targeted nutritional and lifestyle interventions, as well as supplements and medications when appropriate. She also includes biohacking techniques like meditation, breath work, and cold exposure therapy. Through her approach, Dr. Lulu has helped many patients achieve lasting relief and an improved quality of life. So, Dr. Lulu, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Kate. I'm so excited to be here today and talk about one of my favorite subjects to talk about. Not my favorite subject, but my favorite subject to talk about. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So where would you um where would you like to begin? Um, maybe telling us a little bit, you know, about about your background and what you do. Mm-hmm. And then maybe sure. we can yeah, that's take it great. from there and talk about, you know, how you help people with anxiety. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, Kate, I'm a naturopathic physician, like you mentioned, and I've kind of had of a, you know, I'll shorten my my life journey into <laughs> a few sentences or so. Um, but I really started my, I grew up in a healthy health household. My mom was really into health, healthy eating, meditation, yoga. So that kind of set that foundation or backbone, I think for, you know, where I am today. Of course I had my own, you know, trials and tribulations through teens and twenties of exploring, rebelling, (laughs) all of that great stuff. So I learned how to then incorporate those things that I discovered from my mom into my own life, learning more about how healthy eating, how, and I I lived at a yoga retreat center, started meditating on my own. This was in my late twenties really starting to dive into how to help my own self. And that's kind of really started the path. I became a yoga teacher, massage therapist. Then I went to naturopathic medical school uh, in Bastyr in Seattle. And so that kind of like really inspired me to help people deeply to really just like help people to live the best life that they can live and just, you know, really, really enjoy life and with a happiness and that foundation, which it's all about prevention and wellness, really looking deep within the body to see what's going on as a detective. <laughs> wow. Wow. So um, <laughs> that was a, that was a lot in a nutshell. <laughs> I know, right? I told you I was going to narrow it down to like a few sentences. <laughs> we could talk for an hour about my life story easily. Maybe I need to write a book about that. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, uh, so well, so so tell us about sort of how how that you know your life progressed from from that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so when um, I was in medical school, it's basically like a fire hose of information coming at you. Then once you graduate, you then you kind of like assimilate all the information and kind of like fine tune where you want to specialize. So I've really fine tuned that. I would say over the past like three years, that's when I've really gotten into learning about genetics and epigenetics, maybe four years, and really learning how much that blueprint can help patients, how it can really help them learn about their body. And it's all about education, right? When we have that knowledge, it really helps us to thrive. And from that piece, I really dove into learning about women's health way deeper with thyroid issues, adrenal fatigue, anxiety, depression, Uh, menopause, perimenopause, you know, all those pieces where women are just struggling to get a grasp on how to really um, not handle, but how to really 
live their best life from that place of empowerment. And then during COVID, most of my patients that had already had this like level of anxiety and stress, like totally went through the roof, which mm -hmm. we've seen across the board that fallout from COVID people just learning about stress in a different way out. Maybe that's financial or family, you know, working at home, or maybe it's hormones and cortisol. I mean, so many pieces. So now I think that foundation where I've been working with patients a lot with stress and anxiety has really catapulted into a much bigger platform because patients are now realizing what that chronic stress is, how it affects them and then what they can do about it or needing help to see what they can do about it. Yeah. And realizing that, you know, when they are in that situation where they are particularly stressed, that all, that, that's all connected to their anxiety. Mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so if they can sort of start to unravel the, the, the pattern of stress and start to work with that, that will help you know, alleviate mm -hmm. some of the, their anxiety. Yeah, usually. Mm. Yeah. And we, and there's so many studies now that have do, been done that show how st chronic stress impacts so many different systems in the body. You know, it's not just about mental health, but it affects, you know, the physical aspect of our body. It affects cardiac health. It affects immune health. I mean, there's so many pieces, gut health and hormone health. So, you know, it's like stress is just a small piece. I think it's a word that's so overused even, yeah. you know, it, cause it has so many layers and people are now realizing like, okay, I can have acute stress. Maybe you, I don't know, hurt yourself with, in the kitchen with a knife or something, right? Like, you know, have a little accident, Not, knock on wood. Nobody's out there doing that today, but, and then, but it can develop into a chronic situation, right? Where then you're like having, you almost go into this roller coaster in your mind where it's on repeat, right? Trying to deal with it over and over again. And that's what people are realizing that impacted stress is so huge on the system with like an onion layer effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and so if a client came to see you um, that was had was very stressed, so how mm -hmm. would you begin to unravel and un unpeel un that onion? Mm -hmm. Right. Great question, Kate. I think the first thing that I do with a patient that's coming into me, most of the time their top symptoms are usually fatigue and stress. <laughs> that's usually the top ones, but I'll have them do some kind of questionnaire first, um, like a stress questionnaire to allow me to see kind of like, okay, what, where's that level of stress on a scale, right? And then what are the levels that's coming from? So I can kind of see um, from the systematic standpoint, what's that next step? Then I can see, okay, what are the organ systems that might be out of balance? Example, thyroid. Thyroid can easily contribute to stress and depression. Is it a, a hormone level? Are the hormones out of balance? Um, is it adrenal fatigue? So testing, I, I would say maybe 75%, maybe a little bit more than that. I do functional medicine testing right off the bat because I want to see what's going on, testing, not guessing. So that's, that's like that first step, really understanding what's going on with a patient. And that first visit, I do two visits an hour each, because I want to hear their story, right? How do they get to where they are in the moment? Is it some past trauma? That's that underlying stress component. That's always running through their system with every situation that they meet. That's very common, you know? And so then it's about that mindset piece. We need to look and see what's the response to stress. How do we then change that pattern within the system? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so before we continue, so for people, um, so they fully understand about the epigenetics. So could mm -hmm. you explain that to us? Yeah, that's a great question. So most people have heard the term genetics, right? It's our DNA. That's really our blueprint within our body. So if we, you know, looked within our, our physical body, within that is all of our cells and within the cells, all of those cells have DNA within the nucleus. That's our blueprint. And then we have cells who, you know, in every layer of our body. So from there, we have the aspect of epigenetics and epi, it means on top of, so epigenetics is everything in our outside environment that then affects our genetics and stress is a huge piece. So that can be, it's a lot to do with lifestyle. Um, it can be water, nutrition, exercise, how we deal with stress, sleep. Um, it can be uh, toxins in the environment. There's so many different factors that affect us. So for example, if I do a panel, a DNA panel with a, a patient and I'm looking at that stress component. There's talking to me about stress is a big piece. I'll look at those specific genes 
that might be turning on and turning off based on things they're doing in the environment. Let's say, um, you know, B vitamins would help this particular person with the MTHFR gene. Like, okay, well, let's bring those in and see how you manage stress. So it really helps to see how the blueprint can be infected from the outside environment and what we can do to change that gene, to turn it on and off, to have the best response. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, fascinating. I know. I love, I love that <laughs> genetics. It makes me so excited because people are just learning about it. It's so new on the scene. It's just like, oh, wow, really? It's always this light bulb moment for patients because they understand themselves in a different way because it's them. It's so unique. We're each a, a unique, you know, DNA pl blueprint. So if you like, oh, wow, I didn't realize this is how I manage stress, right? These are all the pieces that how I manage stress. Now I have the tools, right? And before it's like, they're just fishing, fishing for things like, okay, maybe I can try this, but then like it can say, these are the types of mindset practices that can really help you, your DNA and have results. I mean, that's, that's a really big shift for people. And what would be sort of, um, you know, with somebody, this is very generic. So if somebody has anxiety, <laughs> so obviously it depends on their mm -hmm. blueprint. Um, but, um, is there a pattern or, or it is just completely individual with regards to um, there are, what may cause it from there, right. from their, yeah, I mean, it is individual. Blueprint. Yeah. I, I think it is individualized, but there's also um, cohesive patterning um, based on because specific genes have a, a specific function, right? So when we have, let's say we have the MTHFR gene and the COMT gene, which are a lot to do with anxiety and mental health and the way that we methylate. So like those are common genes that have a specific result in this specific pattern. So if those, if if I'm looking at a specific stress DNA report, those are commonly going to come out. And then I'm, that's creates a specific individual, but I mean, it is, it's, it's so individualized, like there's patterns, but it's also yeah. very, so unique because you could have that specific piece. And then you could also have like the celiac gene. So it could be coming all from the gut where you have celiac, you know, so there's really some differences in, and uniqueness, which is, I think the future of our medicine it's individualized. We have been so cookie cutter, right? Like you have yeah. this, <laughs> you give yeah, you this. Yeah, yeah. it's not working. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So for our listeners that have anxiety, mm -hmm. so Dr. Lulu, what would you, um, you know, I, you know, I understand that it's all obviously for everyone, it's all very personalized and very individual, but what would mm -hmm. you suggest to people with anxiety sort of overall? that they could do that would be able to help them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. First of all, I really recommend looking at your, how are you managing stress, right? Looking in, um, and you can even do that with like on a piece of paper, right? If that doesn't cause you more stress, but doing a piece of paper, maybe like, you know, write on, divide it in half and write on one side, like pro and con, like what are things that are helping you um, to deal with stress? Maybe like, this is a calming, I don't know, maybe you go for a walk with a friend, like, okay, that helps me relax. Then on the other side of the paper, write all of those things that are causing you stress. And you can kind of see like, okay, what's that piece? So then you can start to bring in lifestyle components that can really help you deal with stress. Like, oh, if I put on some calming music, that can help me relax, right? So meditation practices are a huge component. I, I practice myself and really work with my patients about tuning in, right? Tuning in to turn out that outside environment. So that's a big piece. Breath work can be really helpful uh, to get you into the body, to really ground yourself. And it's really easy to practice in situations where you have those, maybe like a panic attack, wherever that's coming from, like that source of anxiety, right? So it can really bring you back into the body and help you to deal with it in a different way. Um, yeah, and, and there's lots really of foods. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I just think it's really no. important with people with the, you know, learning you know, a breathing technique or a number of breathing techniques that work for them because there are so many. Right. But it's not just savory. So for, many. You know, if you do have a, a panic attack or you feel really anxious, it's actually, you know, bringing it into it your everyday life. So you're, you know, you're in that pattern of using it all the time. Exactly. So when it does come yes. to and that like point, you said, you're... there are different. <laughs> yeah. So it, so, it, you yes. know, so, you, you know, so you, it automatically, you automatically go to that that behavior to be able to calm yourself to, to your breathing. Yes. 
Yeah. And there's lots of apps out there now that can help if you're mm. new to breathing techniques and, you know, you can go and take a class of these, some many, many things online. There's apps, lots of ways. And I just recommend trying different ones out and seeing what really resonates with you. Um, and then practicing it and getting into that routine, like you said, really like, you know, so it's become second nature, you know, what breathing should be, but when, <laughs> when we're practicing it as a, a technique for stress relief, and anxiety, then it can really help us to tune in. So that's a really important lifestyle piece. And the other piece is adequate sleep, because when we're talking about looking at sleep hygiene, I would say 90% of my patients have some sleep uh, issue disorder, working with insomnia. So you want to make sure you're getting an adequate sleep um, routine down. And that can be from um, using maybe a biohacking device like an aura ring, or maybe you're taking a supplement like melatonin or some herbs. Um, maybe you're turning off your electronic devices before you go to bed an hour before, right? Some of you guys are on our phones. <laughs> um, and you are really starting to let your body go into that state of relaxation through the night and then figuring out with your health practitioner, what might be going on at a deeper level, well, whether that's a cortisol imbalance or maybe a hormones with you're going into menopause, or maybe it's something deeper, you know, so that is really important to investigate. If you have insomnia, that is if you're not, if you're getting less than six hours a night, like really restful sleep, you really need to seek out a health practitioner because you need to have that six to eight hours to really reset the body and rejuvenate at a cellular level. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and what else would you suggest, um, for people, you know, that have anxiety? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another great one. I love looking at um, herbs as a way to really help, especially ap adaptogenic herbs. So that's a category of herbal medicine that helps us adapt to stress. So that could be like holy basil or rhodiola is a great one. So these herbs can really help what they do. Basically, it's kind of, I think of them as like a cushion, right? This beautiful like cushion around you that kind of like wraps you in this <laughs> uh, hug of support right throughout the day. So you can take them in the morning and then the afternoon, some of them like ashwagandha can help you relax relax at night. So, so having something to help you deal with stress, herbal medicine is great. And then having something to help you relax, like calming and peaceful to help through the night. So both of those things can be very helpful and easy. Of course, check with your health practitioner before bringing on a new herbal regime to make sure that's in alignment with you. If you don't have any other health conditions, but herbs are great. They're easy to use. The ones I just mentioned have very little contraindications. Most of the adaptogenic herbs are really safe, which is great. And they have really amazing results. You can add them to coffee. You can you add, add a tea. You can, it, they're just really easy to use. Oh, wow. So the, the top ones that you would suggest, so what were they? Mm -hmm. um, I love ashwagandha. Is I would say that is one of my, my yeah top. That's a Eastern and Western herb. Holy basil or tulsi. That's a really good one. It so has a, also has a really great flavor. People really like it as a tea. It has this kind of like basil flavor <laughs> or ba basil. <laughs> um, yeah, so <laughs> I love that one. And uh, lemon balm is actually another really good one. We it's not necessarily an adaptogen, but it really helps to calm the body and it's a nervine, so it'll help really relax the system. It's very easy to grow in your yard or on a pot on your porch. So lemon balm can be really helpful too. And rhodiola was the other one I mentioned. Oh, rhodiola, rhodiola yeah. is, yeah, rhodiola is really a great adaptogenic herb. Um, and it really helps to balance that body and help us to combat stress and fatigue. Um, and Dr. Lulu, so a common one, I think, uh, or particularly in the UK that people know is the chamomile. What would you say about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, chamomile is great, but it's very mild. So right. when, when I have patients that are in a state of, of extreme anxiety and stress, chamomile usually doesn't seem to work very well. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's, it, you know, and it, it's great in that, in, that it is calming. You can use it as a nice tea to help relax, but usually I find it's just not strong enough because it's a very mild, it's great for our children. That's where I really see it coming into play. Like if you're having some, uh, you know, kids out there, moms with kids and there's, and you're having stress like at school or things, chamomile is great. 
you can have them drink it before bed, like it's a sleepy time tea. So that's where I see it much more used with patients is with their children, but you can still use it. It's a great, also, if you have that uh, stress from the gut, from the stomach, because it's a carminative, it helps to relax the gut. So if you're, you know, have that worry every time you're stressed, chamomile tea will really help with that. And would that be the best one to take if you have a, you know, gut problems, you know, because of anxiety? Yeah. Yeah. That would be a good one to bring on. Um, I would really want to look and see what the root is of that. You know, if there's something deeper in bringing on maybe some things to help soothe the gut, um, of course, nervines like lemon balm and chamomile can help with that, but we want to see what's the root cause of the gut. Is it coming from stress? Is it coming from dysbiosis in the gut? Is there bacteria? So, cause bacteria can really disrupt the mind and brain connection, right? Where our serotonin is made in the gut. So if we're having a gut issue, we have to heal the gut and that can really help with the anxiety and stress. <laughs> and what do you think about probiotics? Yeah, probiotics are great. Um, they can be very helpful. I see them do it because you can also use them as a way to help with anxiety and stress. There's specific probiotic strains that actually help with stress. So a lot of times I'll do a gut panel and that will allow me to see what types of bacteria are out of balance in the gut, because then I can really fine tune. I can say like, oh, lactobacillus, you know, oh. you're really low. Let's bring that in. And then let's see how that helps. So, you know, it, then we're, again, we're testing and not guessing and just not like fish because the probiotics, mm -hmm. there's general ones, but then you can be very specific with strains and also strength as it, you know, if you're shopping out there, you can see there's so many different probiotics. So you do want to um, take one that's geared towards your problem or issue, what you have going on in the system. Yeah. Oh, it's fascinating. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so Dr. Lulu, now your book, Detox, Nourish, Activate, Plant and Vibrational Medicine for Energy, Mood and Love. So tell us about your book. Is all this information in there? Um, it, yes, especially with the, so the mood energy and love is about the heart, the adrenal system and the brain. So it's a really, really got great information for how to work with the adrenal system, which is all about fatigue and stress. So yeah, all this information, it goes by each, um, as 12 different, um, specific areas. It looks at, uh, foods, herbs, aromatherapy, meditation, uh, mind component affirmations. So you can go straight to that section for mood and look at all those pieces and get that advice. So it's, it's great for stress. Super, super recommend it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I think we all need to get this book. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> oh, it sounds fantastic. Um, and do you work with mindfulness with your clients? Always. <laughs> I was not, there's not a patient that I don't have that component because I believe in the holistic model. You have to address the physical, the mental, the emotional, spiritual body. They're all connected. We can't disconnect. And that's the problem that we're having. We're seeing in our current medical model. It's been disconnected, right? You go into the physical doctor and then they say, I see this and they send you out to someone else. And then that person sends you out to another person. At least that's how it is in the States. Right. And it doesn't work. Yeah. Because then you end up having 12 people. And yeah, so the holistic model allows us to see all those components together. Of course, I might refer out for more deeper work if needed, like counseling, something like that. But mindset really allows us to see ourselves from a different perspective, right? It allows us to really see, it's almost like you're taking that looking glass or glasses and turning it around, right? In a different way and seeing a perspective of how we're living our life. What changes do we need to make? Slow changes can have a great impact, even when we do, you know, make a little change every day, not like massive overnight because people can't, it's not sustainable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's all a process. Mm -hmm. And like, it's, you know, it's peeling that onion, isn't it? And then working through, you know, the different layers with different, you know, different ways, different techniques and different mm -hmm. avenues. Yes. Oh, wow. So if people wanted to um, find out more um, and you obviously work online. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a telemedicine practice. Um, I did have a large clinic before COVID, but then I closed it. And so now I just see all patients uh, via telemedicine, via video, and I see patients all over the world. So in Europe, UK, I can do lab work and supplements there. I see, I have patients in New Zealand and Bali, like all over. So it actually really was great for me. It expanded my practice um, in a way that it's amazing, you know, because patients are like, oh, I don't mind seeing you in video. <laughs> it's a new thing. <laughs> so how do you get the details though? 
How how are you going to you know find out more if it's you know if it's oh, online? If someone like out of out, like in another country, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, I use a testing company based in Europe for my patients that are out of the states. I can also use them for my state my state patients too. But and so I can still order testing, and then I can do supplements. Same thing. So it's just like I'm using a different like platform because they then they, they can send test kits to my patients at in at, from Europe because here in the states we just don't do that. It's like it was just so expensive. But when I have a European company, they can, you know, they can send them easily because it's like part of that model, like in, in London, right. I can see patients there. I can easily send a test kit. We can get the results. We can talk about it and I can recommend supplements. It's very, very easy or not everybody gets supplements, but most of the time there's something I bring on board in that way. (laughs) Fascinating. And so if, if somebody, you know, wanted to go ahead and they, um, and they were sent a test kit is how, how does that work? Mm-hmm. Is it- Let's say, for instance, we were going to do a DNA test. Um, they so that DNA test would come to them in the mail, right? And DNA is a saliva swab most so that's of the time. A uh, so they- but if it was say mm-hmm. for you know gut problems, say. Yeah, that's a stool test. Um, so that's uh, you, you usually, you know, you're going to uh, poop into <laughs> a container. You take a smear, okay. put it in a vial and you send it back. Um, so most of the all functional medicine testing is usually not blood drawn vial work. It's usually either like a blood spot test, right? So we're doing this like a, a finger prick or we're doing um, a bl- a urine, dried urine or saliva or stool. So it's, it's using a different right. component because- Blood only gives us a snapshot of the moment in time, right? A hair analysis is another piece we can use too. So we want to see something that extends that view, right? What's been happening at a deeper level, because then we can have a bigger blueprint. Oh, how exciting. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's just fascinating. And so um, Dr. Lulu, tell us about uh, cold exposure therapy. Mm. I love using cold exposure therapy. So it's kind of like the rage right now with like cold plunges, but I'm talking about using it in a contrast hydrotherapy way, which is part of naturopathic medicine and and biohacking in that way. So what cold exposure therapy does, and I like to use it in combination with doing sauna work. So getting the body heated and then going into a cold exposure, it, uh, it creates this, um, communication between the immune system. Um, is one, it can create this like surge. Let's say for instance, you have chronic inflammation. Maybe you have, um, chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia. It creates a surge of the immune cells to the area. And when, and then when you go into the other temperature, they, they kind of like have this wave back and forth. So it actually reduces the inflammation because it's like there, we have our, um, lymphocytes, which go to the scene when we have chronic inflammation. So it reduces that lymphocyte load. And studies have shown that when we do cold and hot therapy, it can reduce the white blood cell count by like 30,000. So it can really bring down a white blood cell count and reduce inflammation really quickly. It's also really great for stress and anxiety, calms the system. It really puts ourselves back in the body using that breath work can bring this back into that state. So cold and hot therapy together are a great way to combat fatigue. Wow. Cool. (laughs) Yeah. You can do it in your shower. You don't have to have a fancy facility. (laughs) You can just have a hot shower and then turn uh, three minutes of hot, 30 seconds of cold, repeat three times and do that one to two times a day. Very easy. You don't have to have, you know, whole (laughs) thing set up. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fascinating. And is all of that information in your book? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if there's hydrotherapy um, actually in, in my book, there's not, I don't, there's not actually, but there's in, there's hydrotherapy information, um, on my website, I believe. Um, or you can message, there's some of it on my Instagram. Um, I have there, it is in my stress, um, freebie that your listeners can grab. So it's, oh, there's so tell us about that. On the, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I have this amazing, 
freebie to really help you deal with stress. And it's going to go, it has lots of components. It's going to help you have a great routine, how to manage, which is a big part of stress. It has lifestyle components. What foods are the best? It's going to give herbs, my recommendations, like we talked about today, some essential oils, and then lifestyle components as well. What treatments you can bring in to really help, whether that's a um, using a castor oil pack or hydrotherapy. So it's going to give you the whole great layout head to toe, some things you can start doing today to really help. And that's straight on my, um, you have the link you can send out, but also you can go yeah. to my Instagram and download it there. And what's it called? I haven't got it. Uh, the, the, the stress handout or the Instagram? The stress ha um, handout. <laughs> okay, great. Yes. It's my guide to stress relief. <laughs> Dr. Lulu's guide to stress relief. <laughs> oh, okay. okay, good, good. Um, and what is your Instagram handle? It's at Dr. Lulu Shimek. So it's L-U-L-U-S as in Sam, H-I-M as in Mary, E-K. Super easy to find me. And I have tips all the time about things to do. Amazing. Um, and we will have all the information and links in the show notes anyway. Um, and mm -hmm. what is your website? Mm -hmm. It's uh, D-O-C-L-U-L-U dot com. So Doc Lulu, like what's up, Doc? Like it's super easy again to find me there. And um, all this information, there's lots of different resources. I have free resources and ways to get in touch and in contact with me. Um, if you're wanting to become a patient, there's an easy button there. Boom, you can click and apply. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Dr. Lulu, thank you so much for joining us. It's such a shame we're out thank of time. Thank you. I yeah. know it goes very fast, right? <laughs> I know it does. It does. And, you know, such, you know, such valuable, all constructive, fantastic information. So thank you so much. Mm, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And thank you to everybody for listening. And before we go, make sure you subscribe to the podcast on Apple iTunes or wherever you listen. So you never miss an episode. And then, of course, let us know what you what you think of the show. And Show some love, your favorite podcast by leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you may listen. So thank you to everybody for listening. And I look forward to speaking with you in the next episode.